mains and update the mains, primarily as they apply to infrastructure as a service. Now, previously I've talked about things like high availability and how virtual machines work, but as a really quick recap, I can think about, I always start with a cloud service. And inside a cloud service, I can create virtual machines. And in Azure, if I want a service level agreement around my virtual machines, I have to have at least two instances of my workload in something called an availability set. But what is that? Why is this thing important? And it really boils down to the availability of my virtual machine in a kind of disaster, an unplanned event and planned events like maintenance operations. And really what's happening behind the scenes, although Azure may seem magical in many ways, lots of technologies as get sufficiently advanced, it becomes indistinguishable from magic. Uh, someone intelligent said that once. And what essentially happens behind the scenes is, what is Azure? Azure is really, uh, at a very fundamental level, Racks and racks and racks of servers. Now there's very intelligent fabric, there's management, there's resource griefing, lots of cool stuff there. But fundamentally, I have racks and I have servers in the racks. And there's kind of a top of rack switch in these things, there's other elements, there's power supplies. So in many ways, I can think of a rack as a point of failure. The top of rack switch could fail, the power could fail. So we typically think of a rack as a fault domain. This is something that could fail. So commonly I think rack equals a fault domain. So when I put virtual machines into an availability set, this is something I can do during creation or even post creation, it will make it restart. What does that do? So if I put VMs in an availability set, actually, let me take a step back from that. Let's say I don't use availability sets. Let's say, hey, I want to put a service up in Azure, and I'm going to create two instances of it. I'm going to create two IIS web servers. Okay, that's great. What's to stop Azure creating the VMs? Hey, I'm going to put one VM here, and I'm going to put one VM here. It's going to put, put on the same rack. Now, chances of that happening may be fairly low, just given the scale of Azure and the scale of a Stamper scale unit cluster, but it could happen. That's kind of useless to me because the reason I'm deploying two instances might be for scale, but it's also to protect me from some kind of unplanned failure. What if Azure has a problem? This rack fails. I want my VM on another rack, a different rack. And so what an availability set does, very basically is, when I put VMs in an availability set, it tells Azure to split them over two fault domains. So this is an availability set. So what it makes it do is Azure, when it deploys VMs to an availability set, it will split them over two fault domains. Now, today it's two fault domains. If I created four virtual machines, they would be split over the same two fault domains. So I'd have two VMs in each fault domain. If I deploy 10 VMs, I'd have five in each fault domain. I don't get each one goes to a different rack. The way it works today is it would be split over two fault domains, no matter how many VMs. Now what's important when I use availability sets is to never mix workloads. Because remember, all it's doing is splitting them over two fault domains. If I mix my SQL boxes and my domain controllers and my IIS servers into one availability set, I could absolutely end up with all of the SQL on this fault domain, all of the IIS on this fault domain. Azure can't tell what's inside the VM. So when I have different workloads, I create an availability set for each workload. So if that was my maybe SQL, if I wanted to deploy IIS servers, I would create a different availability set for my IIS servers. I would create a different availability set for my domain controllers, another availability set for some application, etc. So I never mix workloads. One availability set, for each unit of work. So I want to make sure it's split over fault domains. And I can see that. So I have an availability set over here, and I have three instances of it. And you can see, I've got my three IIS instances, 
and it's split over two fault domains, fault domain zero and fault domain one. My third VM is back in fault domain zero. It kind of round robins how it deploys them. So I get some assurance in the event of some unplanned failover, failure, sorry, uh, I won't lose all my VMs. My service would stay functioning. And that's how Azure can do a service level agreement. Hey, as long as you've got at least two instances of your service and it's in an availability set, I can give you a 99.9% .9 or whatever the exact SLA is these days, I can give you that. Because, hey, I've got my own mechanisms in place to limit scope of failure to a particular rack, particular fault domain. So I feel pretty good that we can meet that SLA. So that's a fault domain. And you see this other thing called an update domain. And you'll notice each VM is actually in a separate update domain. So what do are, what are these do? Now, I really think of update domains more around platform as a service, but they do have an impact on IaaS as well. So in a platform as a service, a platform as a service is where I write my app a certain way, I deploy my application to Azure, and I say, hey Azure, uh, I want 20 instances of that thing running. Or I want five, or hey, scale that thing depending on load. And it goes and creates VMs with my application in it all automatically. That's the great thing about pads. I don't worry about the OS or middleware stuff or runtimes. I just write my app and I deploy the thing. And Azure takes care of everything else. It's kind of magical. So in that world, let's say I've got 20 instances of my app deployed. And now I have a V2. When I deploy my V2, I don't want to shut down my service as I'm deploying my V2. I want to deploy a certain number at a time. And that's what update domains are. I can kind of think of it as, let's kind of remove this for a minute. I go back to my racks of servers. And I'm still, even in that pass world, I'm probably still split over two fault domains. But now what happens is I get these update domains as well. And so maybe, let's just say I had four up domains, because I only have four colors, so I'm gonna be kind of simple on this. So my first instance would maybe be on that fault domain. My second instance would come over here. My third instance would be back on this fault domain. My fourth instance would kind of come over here. Now my fifth instance, well, that would actually come back to this update domain. My sixth one would be bounced over here, sort of thing. Oh, oops. Close that out. And so on. And actually, I think in PaaS, I can get up to 20 of these update domains, so I can be very scalable. But the way this works is when I roll out my application, it says, okay, well, I'm going to update update domain one first. So it would basically shut down instances one and five in this case, update them to the new version. Once that's finished, then it would go and shut down update domain two. But you notice I'm only losing a quarter of my VMs at any one time. Obviously, if I had 20 update domains, I'd only lose a 20th at any one time. So it enables me to very granularly control kind of the rollout as I push out new versions of my application in PaaS. Now, for IaaS, it actually works thinking about host updates. Behind the scenes, those servers that host the VMs, they're running an operating system. Now, Azure doesn't really patch. Azure takes too long to patch stuff. It really kind of just reboots from a new image that has all the patches in it. But there's still some period of downtime there. So how this works for IaaS is there's five fault domains um, for each availability set for your workload. And that's why you can see 0, 1, 2. I'm on three, because I've only got three VMs. If I had five, I'd see 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. If I had 10, I'd see 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, it would round robin. But only two fault domains, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, etc. And so what that means is, in the same way as when they do their sort of host updating in Azure, each update domain gets updated one at a time. So as it's doing its host updates, all my VMs in update domain one, so update domain zero, those hosts would be shut down first, patched, rebooted, and brought back up. My VMs would then start. Then it would update update domain two. Those VMs would shut down. The host would shut down. It would boot from the new image. They would come back up. Then three, then four, then five. Then one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Kind of get, get that's the way it would work. Now, but obviously, it's only going through one cycle. Right? So all the VMs in that first update domain, those hosts get updated, they go unavailable. So that's how it applies to IaaS. So 
So think fault domains, unplanned failure, all of the things would disappear in that fault domain until it's fixed. Update domains during planned maintenance operations, they shut down one update domain at a time. So if my IaaS VMs in my availability set are split over five update domains, when routine maintenance happens, they only shut down one update domain at a time. So I'd only lose a fifth of my VMs during those maintenance operations rather than an entire fault domain. So again, it would update, update domain zero first. Those VMs would shut down, it would patch, boot from the new image, bring them back up. Once they're back up and running, then it would go shut down the VMs and update domain one, et cetera, two, three, four. And that's that. So that's really the big difference. I think about fault domains, I split over two, unplanned failures. Update domains, I split over five, again, assigned in a round robin, and that's for planned maintenance operations for, for IaaS, for those host updates. Again, PaaS is also used when I think about updating my application. In IaaS, we don't have that concept, but that's how we're gonna minimize the downtime of our workloads. Hope that kind of made sense, hope that was useful. Appreciate your time.